Now y'all are always asking me, Todd, if I move to Scottsdale, what is there to do there? Well, today we're gonna have a little bit of fun. I'm gonna take you on a riding tour up the Indian Bend Wash Path in South Scottsdale on my new wheels, the Phoenix Homes and Hotspots Segway. We're gonna ride up the path. We're gonna talk about what there is to do outdoors. I'm gonna show you all the vibrant activity down here in South Scottsdale. We're gonna talk about a little bit of real estate along the way and anything else is pertinent. I'm gonna tell you where to take your dog. I'm gonna tell you where to take your date. And we're gonna get after that in a minute. But first of all, we need to do a quick and a quick quick equipment check helmet check gopro check key music we got the music uh badass t-shirt i gotta let people know who runs it down here check check and what else oh the terminator sunglasses you know it we're getting after it now Hey, what's up everybody? This is Todd Hall, founder of Phoenix Homes and Hotspots, right here in beautiful, sunny Scottsdale, Arizona. Hey, if it's your first time visiting the number one real estate resource here in the state of Arizona, and you wanna know everything there is to know about the great homes, the beautiful communities, and the top hotspots that surround them, all you have to do is subscribe to our channel right now, then punch that bell. That way we can notify you every time we create new great videos here on Phoenix Homes and Hotspots. Now listen, we're constantly getting phone calls, emails and texts from new clients from around the country and from all around the world. They're asking for more information about Scottsdale neighborhoods. They want Scottsdale community tours, home tours, hotspot tours, whatever it might be. So if you're moving to Scottsdale, Arizona or thinking about moving to Scottsdale, all you have to do is give us a call shoot us a text or send us an email. That way we can be your key to AZ. All right, so as we get started here, I'm looking to the south. I am, uh, the, the road that we're facing right now is McKellips Road. This is the southernmost point of Scottsdale and the southernmost point of the Indian Bend Wash Path down here in South Scottsdale. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna ride north. Uh, I'll turn here in a second. You can see the airplane coming in. Um, just uh, off to our west in the direction I'm looking right now, kind of down in the southwest, is, this, is the um, Phoenix Sky Harbor Airport. Just beyond that is downtown Phoenix. So that's about, the airport's about 15 minutes from here, another five minutes over to downtown downtown Phoenix for some of the best restaurants, ball games, that type of thing. Um, pointing towards the sun over here, that is west. And then as we look to the east, you can see McKellips Lake. McKellips Lake is um, one of the only lakes here in Scottsdale. This is a man-made lake. Uh, one of the only lakes that um, you can actually do some boating. So no gas motors, but you can do electric motors, paddle boats, and that type of thing. So also some really good fishing over here. All right, let's get going. Catch anything, man? Uh, just, uh, uh, sunfish. sunfish so far? Some good sized bass in here, I think. Yeah, there is. Nice. Good luck. So, this lake is stocked with. Um, in the winter months, these lakes are stocked. These uh, lakes along the Indian Mill Wash Path are stocked with trout. So in the colder months, they're stocked with trout up to 12 inches long. In the warmer months, they're stocked with catfish up to a couple pounds. Uh, up to I want to say a couple pounds. Uh, there's also some really nice sized largemouth bass in these lakes. Um, and so I, I, the other day I was talking to a guy out here who's like, had just caught right before I got there, just caught a five pound uh, largemouth bass. Uh, so you can see a lot of fishermen out on this lake and you'll see a bunch of lakes as we continue to move um, north. Now we're gonna cover, like I said, we're gonna cover 85257, which is the zip code we're in right now. Sorry, I'm heading up this hill. So we're gonna do a quick walk here because my big body, this segue will not take my big body up these little hills. Um, so we're going to do 85257, then we're going to go up to 85251, and we're going to hit a small portion of 85250. So we're going to hit two and a half zip codes. We're going to talk about things to do outside, outdoor lifestyle. We'll talk about a few restaurants along the way, and we're going to talk some real estate as well. 
Uh, out to the left, this is just a trailer park. 85257, one of the things about Scottsdale is there's not really uh, what you would consider a bad area of Scottsdale in terms of high crime or anything like that, but you are gonna find some areas that are older, and those areas are down here on the south side, excuse me, here in South Scottsdale. Um, these homes are gonna be older. Now, it is gonna be a mix, meaning that, it is gonna be a mix, meaning that um, some of these homes are completely original from the 1950s. Others have been remodeled to be to look almost brand new. So the price range, with that being said, the price range is gonna vary uh, some based on whether the home has been remodeled, the size, whether they have a garage and some of those things. Off to my left, there's some ball fields out in front of us, but off to my left is Yavapai Elementary School. Um, again, just north of McKellips Road here. Yavapai, and you can see way off in the distance, you can see the um, Camelback Mountains. So we're gonna head up it, kind of in that direction. We're gonna stay to the east of it. Um, Yavapai Elementary School, I will tell you, this is not my favorite area for schools. So if schools are important to you, my recommendation would be to um, watch my Scottsdale Schools video. In fact, you, what you want to do is you want to check out my entire uh, Scottsdale playlist on the YouTube channel. You can find the enti our entire playlist. Inside of that, you're going to find my Scottsdale Schools video. And you'll want to understand that because Scottsdale Schools are, uh, we have a really good school choice program here. So if you ended up moving down here into Old Town Scottsdale or somewhere down in the South Scottsdale area and didn't necessarily like the schools, you can go a little bit north. Um, Scottsdale Unified School District is ranked number two in the entire Phoenix Metro for best schools in, um, in this area. So overall, the schools are good. It's just this particular um, area down here that I'm not a huge fan of with the school. So you can go north into some of the Scottsdale schools there, or you can go west over into Arcadia, which is over there by Camelback Mountain. You can go west and um, take your kids into some of those schools as well. Also have a great charter school system and a great public system. Uh, uh, sorry, not public. public charter school system and a great private school system here as well. Um, you can see this ball field, the softball fields off to the left. Lots of people out. Very pet friendly out here. You're going to see multiple dog parks along the way. We just passed one of them. We're going to see multiple dog parks. I'm going to, we're going to finish at my favorite dog park uh, up at Chaparral Park. Um, so that's where we're going to end this thing today. All right, we're crossing over and we're heading up towards El Dorado Park. And that, that park um, that we just left is Vista del Camino. So we're heading up towards El Dorado Park right now. Uh, by the way, right now we're in about the second week of May. Highs today are in the mid 90s. Overnight lows will probably be in the 70s, maybe hit the 60s. Right now it's probably in the 80s, uh, but really pleasant. It's a great um, disc golf course out here. So you're gonna see a lot of disc golfers here over the next half mile or so. Um, it's, there's, they play tournaments and all kinds of stuff out here. So really popular out in this area is this disc golf course. And of course, along the way, you're gonna see just a lot of wide open grassy park areas. Um, to the right, there's a picnic area, there's a kid's playground, grass volleyball in this area. We're gonna see some sand volleyball along the way as well. People out playing basketball. And it's a Monday night, so again, it's just this is just a super active area. If you live down in this area, even if you don't live in this area, um, you know, there's, there's tons and tons of stuff to do down here. So you don't have to necessarily feel like you need to live in this area to enjoy this um, this Indian Ben Wash Path. In fact, I didn't mention it, but this, the Indian Ben Wash Path spans 11 miles from where we started back there. It spans in 11, we're not gonna do all 11 miles, but it spans 11 miles all the way up into a section that I call Scottsdale East. And one of the things you're gonna notice here is this is really flat and really easy to walk, really easy to bike um, or Segway or whatever you wanna do. So, um, and of course down here, it's very lush and green as well. Um, now this 85257, from a residence and home standpoint, this isn't a huge condo area. When we move into 85251, it's gonna be a lot more popular for condos, townhomes, patio homes. But here in this area, you are gonna find some, um, we'll stop here for a second. You are gonna find some um, condos. Most of them are in the direction that I'm facing right now, off to the east, you see a little preschool over there. Uh, more, more disc golfers. Um, but you're gonna find that, um, you don't have a huge condo presence in 85257. Uh, right now I have 28 active listings 
um, actually no, tw nine, nine active, so 28 under contract. So really there's only about a one week supply. Um, a normal market, just so you know, is about a three to four month supply in housing. So about a one week supply as far as condos. And they range, um, they're actually really affordable down here. They range from, uh, as far as what I have on the market right now, 165 to $300,000. Now, um, 85257, um, average home prices right now, median home prices are 440,000. The active homes on the market range from 300,000 to 2.2 .2 million. So there are some big remodels um, down here that, um, that do exist. As far as um, there's 17 under, uh, I have 58, sorry, um, total between under contract and active, 17 are active, 41, I believe it was, um, are under contract. So again, it's a really competitive market right now. This area is always pretty competitive because you don't have a ton of people selling in this area. People that live down here tend to stay here for a long time. Off to our left, you see furnished apartments. It's a really nice furnished apartment complex, all gated in um, and really private over there with great green belt access. So if you're coming out to stay, whether it's just to vacation or you're coming out to um, look for a home or you're just waiting for your home to close, you have these furnished, something like this, these furnished apartments. Obviously there's a huge Airbnb presence down here um, in this area, specifically in 85251 as we get closer to Old Town Scottsdale, a little bit f further ahead north of us. Uh, we'll talk about that, but Airbnbs are a great option. There's some great resorts in 85251 around Old Town Scottsdale as well. So if you're coming out um, for, for whatever reason, you can check out any of those. Now, if you're a, a potential client, you're moving to Scottsdale or thinking about moving to Scottsdale, we have a new program set up now where we have um, complimentary resort stays out here. So whether it's three days or seven days, we can actually comp a, a resort stay for you. So contact us for the details on that and we can get you all set up um, with a resort stay. That's something that we're doing that's brand new um, for our clients and potential clients that are coming out into, uh, into the Scottsdale area. All right, we're crossing over. This is McDowell Road. We're gonna cross over into Vista del Camino Park. Off to our left, you see a really nice skate park over there. That's the skate park is always packed. So you have, so you have the skate park to our left. Um, and again, just housing all along these green belts. You have single family homes down here again in 85257, mostly single family homes. Although again, there are a few little condos and townhomes mixed in, but mostly single family um, around this er particular area. Lots of water features, as you can see there to the left. And again, it's just park after park. They say, um, I think the city of Scottsdale's website says there's 23 parks, lakes, golf courses, um, basically that this green belt spans through um, just here in the city of Scottsdale. Now, if we would have taken the green belt south from where we started down there on McKellips Road, that would take you down to Tempe Town Lake, down by Arizona State University. It would take you down to Tempe Town Lake where, um, where you have, again, just a long trail along that area, really cool area down there as well. On um, that lake, there's paddle boating, fishing, and everything down there also. Um, so uh, again, just really, um, so, some really cool things to do out here, whether it's in Scottsdale or you can head over to Tempe and do that as well. So you can see, just really peaceful, really beautiful out here. Uh, population in 85257 is 34,000 currently. The average resident age is 35. And if you compare that with Scottsdale, overall Scottsdale average resident age is 47. So it's really a young crowd down here. Uh, one of the things that you will see, uh, median home age, by the way, is, is 52. Uh, most of the homes built in the 1950s, 54% of um, the homes down here are owned, 46% are rentals. So this is a much bigger rental market than what you're gonna see up on the north side. Um, median household income here in 85257 is $66,000. So that's the average uh, income that people make in order to be able to live here. Again, median home price is only $440,000. So um, although you're gonna be hard pressed today to find a home at $440,000. If you do, it's going to be a pretty extreme fixer. Those prices are moving up pretty quickly. In fact, I think the zip code, if I remember right, has appreciated about 19% over the last 12 months. 
Uh, I started to say that the average resident age is 37. What you're gonna find down here is you're gonna find some of these owners in these homes that were built in the 50s that are still original owners from the 50s. Um, and they just have never left. They love it here, have never left. Of course, their homes are completely, pretty much for the most part, original. Um, and then what you see is some of those homes gradually getting bought up by investors, completely remodeled out, and then um, sold primarily to a millennial crowd, like a young family, young CEOs, and more of a millennial type of crowd. Although there are some pockets for seniors down here as well. You see sand volleyball, again, Camelback Mountain way out um, in the distance over there on the backdrop, some football fields here. I want you to think that it's, this is an area only for millennials because there are some great senior communities and seniors love this area as well. Again, it's a very actor, active outdoor lifestyle, so it's a great spot really for seniors as well. Beyond this park over here to the left is, uh, is uh, Coronado, sorry, Coronado High School and again, not my favorite. So this little area down here in 85257, if you do move down here, just know if you have kids, you're probably, um, you may, I mean, you don't have to, but a lot of people, um, will take their kids a little bit, whether it's out of district or just further north in the Scottsdale Unified District, um, they will take them out of, you know, what, what their neighborhood is assigned as far as schools and take them into some other areas if, if they're able to. So just keep in mind, if you are moving down to this area, you have kids, um, you either have to kind of go with the schools that are down here. I think Yavapai is ranked on greatschools.org. I think it's a ranked like a number, th uh, like a three out of 10. And Coronado is not much better. Hi. Um, Coronado High School is not a whole lot better. So again, just know that going into it. I uh, see some basketball courts over there. I mentioned it earlier, but the great thing about this trail is it's just really flat. Um, I also talked earlier about how it's super plush and green down here on this side, down here in South Scottsdale. But it's really kind of like this all the way up, for the most part, up to the 101 freeway. Um, and where the 101 freeway loops and you cross over it to the north side, that's where I, that's the area that I consider North Scottsdale. So a lot of people will classify North Scottsdale much further south than that. But uh, where it loops up there and you cross over, that's where it really turns into like a desert, little desert foothills and mountains. It becomes a little bit more of a rural feel where here it's really dense down here, really has a, a great urban feel to it. And so um, it, it all changes once you get north of the 101. Now, as we get further north in Scottsdale, as a general rule, the homes get newer, right? So as we continue to travel north, we're even gonna see it here on our little route right here. The homes get newer. As a general rule, they also get pricier. So that's one of the things that you have to keep in mind. Um, like I said, 440,000 is the median in 85257. You get north of the 101, those three zip codes, you're looking at well over $800,000 median home prices, which isn't bad for, you know, when considering where most of you all are moving from, whether it's California or major cities in well, like Portland, Seattle, Chicago, New York, New Jersey, um, you know, some of those states, uh, most of you, 800,000 is a drop in the bucket. So it's really not too bad. But of course, when you get up there, that 800,000 is really, really popular. It's kind of the same thing with inventory. It doesn't last very long. Off to the left, again, you can see Camelback Mountain over there. Some really great hiking on Camelback Mountain. If you haven't watched my Old Town Scottsdale video, do check that out. Again, it's on my, just go to my Scottsdale playlist and find our uh, Old Town Scottsdale, things to do in Old Town Scottsdale. Um, hiking on Camelback Mountain, certainly one of those things. Uh, there's two really great trails on Camelback Mountain. Um, it's a, it's, the last third is really steep. So it's not really what we would consider a moderate hike. It's a fairly aggressive hike, um, especially once you get up to that last third of the trail. Um, but certainly um, it's, you know, the, the bottom half of it, most people can hike once you get up there. Um, you have to be in pretty good shape to get all the way to the top. But again, two really great trails on Camelback Mountain to hike if you live down in this area, or even if you just live in North Scottsdale and want to come down and enjoy this area for the day, Camelback Mountain is a good option for you also. Off to the left, this is basically just, I guess this used to be part of the Continental Golf Club. 
which is coming up. Um, and it's just kind of like an old section of abandoned golf course that usually just people see people out here walking their dogs and hanging out out here in the grass. Um, so right now it's just a green belt area. To our right, you see the apartment complex. So there are a lot of apartments down here for people that need temporary housing. Um, right now, I don't recommend 12 month temporary housing if you're gonna buy because prices are just so aggressive. Um, but there are definitely different options for different, um, you know, depending on what it is that you wanna do. To the right is an Irish pub. One of the cool things about these pubs out here um, if, you, if you're a pet owner, a lot of times on the patio areas, they'll allow you to have your dog out there. And um, so here you have, again, sand volleyball at this Irish pub over here. There's always people out here playing. I can't remember the name of this Irish pub. It's like J-T-O something agains or R-J-O something a C's, <laughs> whatever it is. But, um, but again, that's Irish pub right there. Probably more importantly, in this little shopping complex, there's a Sonic. I know what you're thinking. Sonic is not local to Scottsdale. You're right. But their burgers, I'm going to tell you, it's the best fast food burger ever. And the chili cheese conies to die for. If you've never eaten at Sonic, come on, what are you doing? All right, we're going to cross over Thomas Road. And as we cross over Thomas Road, we're going to leave 85257. You can see bike stops, restrooms all along this trail. Um, as we leave 85257, we're going to travel into zip code 85251. Um, when they, people think of 85251, they think of downtown Scottsdale and they think of more popularly referred to as Old Town Scottsdale. So we're just hitting the border here. Off to our right is the Continental Golf Club. Off to our right is the Continental Golf Club. And um, this is a par 60 golf course. So it's like, like a little par three or an executive golf course to work on your short game. Um, of course, not exactly what people think of when they think of Scottsdale golf. It's pretty basic. Um, but the cool thing about it is that it's super cheap even during the expensive months. So when some of the golf courses like up in North Scottsdale, they're running $200 to $250 in the winter months, this course is pretty cheap. Right now, early May, if you go out in the morning, you're going to pay about 30 to 50 bucks to play this par 60 course. If you go out um, later in the afternoon, you pay probably somewhere between 20 and $40, depending on what time you actually go out. So again, it's a cool little course to work on your short game. Backdrop over there, you can see the McDow McDowell Mountains. We'll talk a little bit more about what's up there here as we go. But some really cool, pretty backdrops um, between Camelback Mountain and the McDowell Mountains. You see some really cool, um, just different views and backdrops. All right, this community, it's the first real look at a, at a nice community. Um, again, as we move into 85251, these homes tend to get a little bit cleaner than 85257. I don't hate 85257, but I prefer 85251 or even further north at 85250 if I can get it and I can afford it. Let's just take a quick peek in here. Just so you can get a feel for what a neighborhood like this looks like. Now, one of the things down here is, is that um, garages aren't mandatory for these people. You are gonna see some garages here and there, but typically these, again, these homes were built in the 50s. And so what you're gonna see is a lot of times the carports if, are converted into square footage. So like this house as an example, not completely remodeled, but you can see at some point that carport was converted into square footage. Then as you go, you're going to see some model, remodels. You can tell that one was probably partially remodeled. I don't see anything on this street that was looks like a full remodel from the outside. You can tell because they almost look like brand new homes from the outside. But this gives you a feel for what a neighborhood street looks like down here in 85251. Uh, by the way, right now we are on the east side of Scottsdale Road. The Indian Bend Wash Path runs along the east side of Scottsdale Road. So Scottsdale Road is west, which is the opposite direction we're traveling right now. Um, Scottsdale Road is west about a half a mile or so. So it's not too far over to Old Town once we get up here a little bit further north. When we get over to the west side of Scottsdale Road in 85251, the real estate is a lot more expensive than it is over here on the east side. So there's a couple communities I really like over there. One is called Southwest Village, which is the very first neighborhood I lived in when I moved here in 2004. 
The other one is just north of Scottsdale Village on the way over to Arcadia, right off of Camelback Mountain, or Camelback Road, I'm sorry. And it's, I call it the Camelback, or the, <laughs> I call it the Cocktail Corridor. Um, and don't ask me why I call it that. It's just something that I started calling it just because it's much more expensive. Everything in that little district is over a million dollars. Um, and it's pretty close to the Phoenician Resort. If you've ever been out here, you know where the Phoenician is. It's kind of right in that vicinity, but on the Phoenix, uh, um, on, on the Scottsdale side of the Scottsdale Phoenix border over there. If we head down that road, we'll start getting over to Scottsdale Road, but I'll show you kind of some of the through roads over into Old Town Scottsdale here in a minute. It's a great time for golf, by the way. This time of day is phenomenal. Lots of shade on this particular golf course. Off to the left, you see more townhomes. Now, in, in the A5251, let's talk a little bit more about the real estate here. A5251, we're gonna find a lot more condos and townhomes on the market. A lot of them are around Scottsdale Road, within a half a mile of Scottsdale Road, although they, they're spread out a little bit, but if you were to actually look at a map of active listings, you would see dots all over um, in, in the streets just to the east and west of Scottsdale Road. Um, and then as you span out a little bit further, it's more single family homes in those areas. Kind of where we are right now. Although again, you can see some townhomes here off to the left. A little older style. Again, these homes, all this stuff was built, um, you know, all this stuff was built in the 50s for the most part. With, with some exceptions, there's definitely some new build. There are some um, newer, in the last 20 years in, in 85251, we've built a lot of mid to high rise condos. So if that's your lifestyle, again, regardless of your age, you have people of all ages living in those. Um, and so we do have newer in this area, but the stuff that was originally built, again, mostly built in the 1950s. All right, we're gonna cross over this overpass. As we're coming out of this, off to the left is Osborne Park. It's kind of more, it has more of a like just a little neighborhood park feel to it. It's not a real big park. I'll try to stop and show it to you here in a second. Of course, the sun is probably right in that view. Um, but that's Osborne Park off to the left. And then you can see this really nice, another really nice little bread and butter neighborhood. Most of these homes, by the way, depending on if they've been remodeled and converted square footage, are going to range from 1,400 to maybe 2,500 square feet at the most. All ranch style homes down in this area. As we get a little further north, we'll see a few, some two, a little bit of two story mixed in, but most of this is all ranch style homes. Off to our right is the Continental Golf um, Clubhouse. And more of the Continental Golf Course over here probably didn't think you were going to see pine trees down here in the Phoenix desert, but here they are right down here in Old Town Scottsdale. People are always kind of amazed with um, some of the things that we grow out here. So yeah, between cotton, oranges, you know, citrus, oranges, grapefruit, lemons, um, people come down here and start looking at homes like there's a fruit tree in the backyard and it just blows them away. A lot of, you know, a lot of people are familiar with Vegas where you don't have things like that that grow in Vegas because it's legitimately desert, even though it gets hotter here in the summer. Um, but we definitely, uh, we, we grow some pretty cool stuff out here. Okay, so all single family homes off to our left. Like I said, all ranch style homes, mostly. Most of these homes, by the way, are gonna range from mid 400s up to eight, 900,000 if they're completely remodeled with some significant square footage, maybe a one or two car garage along with 2,000 plus square feet and a pool. You could find them down here, neighborhoods like that, um, up to 900,000 and now starting to push over 900,000. Again, there's the mountains up there. There's a really nice backdrop to all of this. One of the things that people commented, uh, if we were to go down this trail right here, that would start to take us into uh, the Old Town Scottsdale area uh, where we get into the entertainment district. Again, I encourage you to watch my video. I, I take you through that entire area, show you the restaurants, nightclub area, resorts, and all of that stuff down in that particular area. But um, what was I saying? Somebody remind me. I'm gonna do these videos live so I can remember what I was saying. I start seeing things and just start talking. Uh, again, really nice apartments over here to the left. 
Uh, I was talking about Old Town Scottsdale a little bit. So yeah, watch that video. I'm going to shoot a new video here pretty soon with the uh, with the new Phoenix Homes and Hotspots segue. I'm going to take you through on a weekend, show you all the activity down there and what's what there is to do down there. So stay tuned for that. We're also doing some cool stuff. We're gonna uh, we're gonna start to shoot some Paradise Valley videos. Uh, so we're gonna do an entire playlist of Paradise Valley. So a lot of times, those of you looking in Scottsdale ask about Paradise Valley as well. So we'll uh, we'll give you some more insight with what's going on there. Oh, I remember what I was gonna say earlier. So we were talking about how clean it is. Also, the other thing about. Um, Scottsdale and, and it doesn't matter whether you're south north or anywhere in between um, not only is it clean but you have a very small I mean if, as far as homeless you very seldom see homeless folks here and the crime rates really low so those are all reasons that people when a lot of times when people think of Phoenix they think of Scottsdale as synonymous to um, to Phoenix so th those are the reasons right I mean these are the things that drive people to this area and again i think for the most part for most of you where you're coming from you're going to find that scottsdale overall is pretty inexpensive i have a scottsdale cost of living video that you should check out and what you're going to see is um obviously home prices here in scottsdale are number i think we, scottsdale actually moved into number two this year and right behind paradise valley for the most expensive homes here in the phoenix metro but again i mean with median overall between 550 and 600,000, it's really not that expensive and then uh, when you get up north into the more of the luxury neighborhoods median is in the 800,000. so you know most of you can afford to live here and if you can afford to live here the great thing is that um, all the other cost of living is very on par with everything else around the country. When you start taking into consideration transportation costs, um, you know, gas, groceries, and all of that stuff, um, we're very, very on par with the rest of the country. So that's one of the nice perks of um, living here is overall cost of living. Again, as long as you can afford to own a home, you're going to like the rest of the cost of living here in this area. So across the way is Indian School Park. We had just crossed over Indian School Road. We're still in 85251 zip code. Right up here, we're gonna cross over to the other side of the road. We're gonna check out Indian School Park. And also we're gonna check out right there, you see the kind of the big screen there, which looks like a big center field wall. That's exactly what that is. That's the San Francisco Giant Spring Training Facility. So we'll cross over and we'll check that out. Uh, what else do I want to tell you about 85251 before we get up here in the next few minutes and cross into 85250? And we're just going to cover a small portion of 85250 today. So we'll go through this underpass, under Hayden Road. We'll go over here, Indian School Park. You're going to find, um, we're going to, we're going to see uh, some really nice sand volleyball courts, basketball courts. Uh, cornhole boards laid out. There's a little uh, park for, for the kids out here. So, um, so anyway, really um, picnic area, of course. And again, just lots of activity. People with their dogs, people with their kids, riding bikes, people of all ages, young, old, the, everything, you know, everybody's out here. So couple things about 85251 in terms of uh, in terms of real estate um, currently median home price here are 398,000 again you're gonna be hard-pressed to find a home here at 398,000 uh, but that is where the medians are right now um, currently active listings and this this will give you an idea because the 398 is going to include some of the smaller condos out here uh, single-family active listings range from 500,000 all the way up to 3.75 million dollars in 85251 and some of those 3.75s are over in that cocktail corridor that I mentioned earlier um, currently I have 24 active listings, 44 under contract. So again, less than two weeks supply. Um, so again, it's a hot market. Two weeks supply where normal inventory, you know, in a normal market would be a three to four month supply. So really crazy right now. 11, uh, home prices have increased over the last 12 months at 11.81%. Uh, Total population here is 41,000 in 85251. Average resident age, again, is pretty young, 37. Um, median home age is 42, although, again, most of the homes were built in the 50s, but you do have some newer stuff mixed in now. Uh, so that brings that down. 52% uh, of the people that live here are renters. So, um, 
So this is, again, there's a big rental market down here. As you move up to North Scottsdale, you're gonna find that, um, you're gonna find that the percentage of ownership skyrockets. In fact, in some of those areas up there, it's a 90 plus percent ownership rate. So the majority of your investors and landlords own down here in South Scottsdale. And the reason for that is it's a great Airbnb area and some of that stuff. I mean, again, this is where people wanna live down in this area. So it makes sense that you have more investors buying down here. Although if you are an investor and you're interested in North Scottsdale, there are, um, based on the fact that there's just not a ton for ran up there it does provide some opportunity um, up in north scottsdale as well you see over to to that side you have basketball courts and cornhole boards and then here's one of your san francisco giants spring training uh fields now this these are their practice fields the san francisco giants actually play a little further um, over towards old town scottsdale a little further west that's where they play games but these are their practice facilities uh, off to the right here so this again is where the boys of summer do spring training and then of course um, where they train throughout the summer for the guys that aren't up on the up on the big league squads the road out in front of us is hayden again we just crossed over indian school over there to the left we're going to pass by the ball fields here next stop is going to be camelback park and then the last stop here is going to be chaparral park just a little bit off to our north uh a couple other things that you may want to know let me see here um condos you can find a condo down here starting at 180,000, and then they're going to range up to 4 million so again remember i said you're going to have some of the older stuff but you're also going to have um you're going to have some of the older stuff but you're also going to have you know some of the newer in the last 20 years some of the mid to high rise condos that have been mixed in uh, so down at the scottsdale waterfront is where the most expensive condo is right now up to four million and 180,000 is going to get you for the most part um, a two bed one or two bedroom um, 180 is going to get you like a one bedroom in most cases you're going to be up in the uh, low, uh, 225 plus to get into a two bedroom most of those are going to be under a thousand square feet so they're not real big units uh, but again if you want to live down here and you don't need a whole lot of space you like the condo lifestyle there's a price range that um, that could definitely work for you down here again all the way up there you can see past the ball fields you should be able to see the mcdowell mountains um, the mcdowell mountains would be in in they kind of curve so they, they span a couple different areas if, if you're familiar with how i break down scottsdale i break it down into five different areas um, so right now we're in south scottsdale then we move up into the mccormick ranch area which i call central scottsdale up where the tpc golf course is just south of the 101 is what i call north central as we go across the scotts the, or the 101 loop to the east side of the 101 that's an area i call scottsdale east and then as you get all the way up into uh north of the 101 that's the area i call north scottsdale now i'm the only one that breaks it down that way so if you start doing google searches you're not going to see it broken down like that but i think it's just easier for people that have never been here to, to wrap their mind around and again i have videos that'll really lay it out on a map so you can see what that looks like anyway the mcdowell mountains span between scottsdale east and north scottsdale and there's some really great neighborhoods out there again a lot pricier homes are newer uh, but if you like living in little mountain desert mountain communities where it's not rural but more of a rural feel more tranquil more quiet a little more quiet um, you know not so dense and urban like it is down here in this area then you'd really like that area so that's an area we can discuss too if you give us a call um, although you can see you know i talk about this area as being urban and dense we've crossed over some major roads and you can see like even just looking over at this road right now it's about six o'clock and there's very little traffic on these roads so that's the other thing that people like to um, comment on when they're here touring for the first time is they're just shocked at how little traffic there is as we're driving around looking at homes whether it's the weekends weekdays um, they're like where is it like where are all the cars um, there's just Phoenix is so spread out like we have a population overall the whole Phoenix Metro is over 4 million but it's so spread out that it spreads our traffic out as well and so you're gonna find that uh, very rarely are you just sitting in bumper to bumper unless you're on the major freeways um, during rush hour going into you know Phoenix in the morning or coming out of Phoenix in the afternoon and of course some other little pockets and areas but 
overall, even that is pretty light compared to what most of you are used to. These condos over to the left, you can see Camelback Mountain in behind, but these condos over to the left are all age restricted, 55 plus condos. So this is a nice little pocket for some of the age restricted folks that want to live out here. Now, of course, they also buy these homes. Um, so you're going to have them, you're going to have retirees and snowbirds mixed in there as well. The park we're in right now is Camelback Park. This park is, um, when I first moved here, this is kind of where I grew up. I, I, my first house was down here in Old Town Scottsdale. It was in that neighborhood that I, uh, I mentioned earlier called Southwest Village, uh, where now uh, median home prices are up over $500,000. And most of those homes are um, in the seven to $800,000 range. But this park was all, um, it was all just like weeds and little lakes and stuff. It was just wasn't well taken care of. So the city of Scottsdale came in about 10, 12 years ago and completely redid this and just made it a really cool little green belt area with a walking trail. I'm sure these homeowners off to our right really appreciated that because I'm sure it increased the value of their property considerably because it was pretty, it wasn't terrible. It was just, it wasn't taken care of. Again, it was just more of a weed area. And so anyway, I used to bring my dogs over here and they would, um, I'd throw, um, they'd do fetching out of these lakes and stuff. Now all the lakes are filled except for the one in front of us. Over to our right, I mentioned that you're going to see a few two stories mixed into 85251. So you can see a few two story homes over there to our right right now. Pretty rare down here, but these are these homes are a little bit newer. And so that's why you see a little bit of two story mixed in with the one stories over there uh, off to the right. Um, little lake here. Okay, so we're gonna come up here. We're gonna cross over. Oh, in fact, back there where the Giant Stadium is, I'm sorry, back there where the Giant Stadium was, we crossed past 85251 and we're now in, um, nope, that's not true. I don't know what I'm talking about. Disregard everything I just said. We're about to cross the border of 85251 and we're gonna go into 85250. From a real estate standpoint, 85250 tends to feel a lot like 85251. There's not a lot of difference. Again, as we get a little bit further north, they can get a little bit newer. Also a little bit more desirable um, than 85257. So 85251 and 85250 would be, if I were pinpointing an area in a perfect world, I would, be, I would choose between those two zip codes. Um, however, if I found the right home in the right neighborhood in 85257, I would definitely live there as well. So this is Chaparral Road. Again, notice the traffic. I mean, this is what, six, uh, nah, it's pushing seven o'clock, I lied. It's pushing seven o'clock. But again, when you look around, there's Camelback Mountain in the backdrop. But when you look around, there's, um, there's just not a ton of traffic compared again to what most of you all are used to. So we went straight down, um, hang on. We went straight down Chaparral Road. It would put us right down uh, just to the north side of the Scottsdale Fashion Square Mall. Which is the largest shopping mall here in the state of Arizona. To our left is Chaparral Lake. This is the other lake. I mentioned McKellips Lake earlier, where on McKellips Lake, where on McKellips Lake, I mentioned this one of the few lakes that you can actually boat on. Um, so Chaparral Lake is the other. So again, you can do paddle boating. You can have a little electric motor out here to do fishing and stuff, uh, kayaking or whatever. So you can have boats on this lake. I don't see any out here today. But you'll see a lot of people fishing along this lake as well. Another stocked lake. So they're gonna catch kind of same thing, catfish, sunfish, maybe trout, um, depending on the time of year. More, more apt to catch trout in the colder winter months. And then of course the uh, bass out here as well. Largemouth bass is kind of everybody's big favorite to catch over here. To our right, you see condos, townhomes. In behind these condos and townhomes to the right are, it's all, these are just sitting kind of along the Greenbelt area, but in behind that, you'll see up here as we get a little further up, is all single family home residences. You guys might catch a sunset with me tonight. Lots of geese and ducks out here. In fact, they're gonna block my road. Beep, 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 beep. They're hissing at me, not cool. All right, we're gonna peace out of here. There's a little boat ramp. 
so Chaparral Park. Chaparral Park is my favorite. It's also my kids' favorite uh, park down here, and it's my favorite dog park. So we're going to finish at the dog park just up here to the north. Um, so you can see some great picnic areas, more um, really nice breakout greenbelt areas for the kids to come out here and play. Um, you're going to find some grass volleyball here. A little bit further up, there's a sand volleyball court. There's a kid's playground. Um, and so what you're gonna see here is this is kind of a, this track I'm on right now is a big circle and you'll see people just out here running laps or biking this. Um, they'll stop at these workout stations and do some little workouts. There's a dude up here, a couple guys up here on this workout station. So you see people just lapping this thing um, as opposed to walking a long trail. So they come out here and park and do this. There's one of the, there's, I mentioned in behind the condos, there's the uh, single family neighborhoods back there. So over to the right, it's all single family housing. Again, very similar to what we've talked about. Mostly three and four bedroom, maybe a five mixed in here and there, 1400 to 2500 square feet, a lot of swimming pools. Um, you know, here in Arizona, swimming pools are really popular. Uh, obviously, because you can use them most of the year, especially if they're heated. Um, you'll get a good five months use out of them. And then, you know, if they're heated, you can swim year round because of the temperature, you know, mo moderate temperatures here. Over to the right here, there is the, um, that, that's the aquatic center. In fact, there's some things I haven't pointed out along the way because there's just so much. So we passed the El Dorado Aquatic Center. This is the Chaparral Aquatic Center over here to the right with the McDowell Mountains um, in the backdrop over there. Kids playground to the left. My kids, my kids. I have a three and six year old, so they spend a lot of time on this particular playground. Basketball courts, sand volleyball off in the distance over there. And then soccer fields. So up here, a little bit as we get up a little bit further, you have soccer fields. You're going to have some baseball fields and softball fields, and then the dog park. And then right next to the dot, well, why, why am I ruining it? Let's just go up there. How about if we just go up there? Um, over by Camelback Mountain, I'm facing Camelback Mountain right now over towards the sun. Uh, over just to the north side of Camelback Mountain, which is the direction we're traveling right now. So to the right of Camelback Mountain is Paradise Valley. Paradise Valley is the most expensive city, the city of, there's, there's a, a kind of an area people refer to as Paradise Valley, which is really Phoenix. But when we're talking the city of Paradise Valley, it is the most expensive city here in Arizona. It's where a lot of the athletes, CEOs, and um, you know, kind of the who's who crowd lives over either in North Scottsdale or, or in Paradise Valley. So that's where that's at if you ever hear about or if you're familiar with Paradise Valley again it's just right down here central everything is you know one of the things that people love about Paradise Valley if they can afford to live there is its central location so around it you have of course Scottsdale to the east you have South Scottsdale to the southeast you have an area called Arcadia and Biltmore to the south and it just really sits in a prime location in the middle of some of the best districts uh, for shopping restaurants uh, nightlife and all that fun stuff, or just outdoor lifestyle, you know, with Camelback Mountain over there on this Indian Bend Wash Path close by. Um, you have the Paradise Valley Country Club over there, so you have tons of golf down here as well. Of course, you have golf everywhere here in the Phoenix Metro. Uh, but anyway, so that's where Paradise Valley is. I mentioned Tempe is to the south, so down in the direction I'm facing right now, um, just the south of Old Town Scottsdale. And then as we go north, this is all Scottsdale, all the way out of the Phoenix Metro, so all the way up through North Scottsdale. Phoenix is also over there to the west, past um, Paradise Valley. We're kind of circling Paradise Valley, really. It kind of circles around that. Paradise Valley is not a huge city. Here's the ball fields. So you have um, T-ball, uh, not T-ball, I'm sorry, Little League going on right now. You're gonna have some beer leagues out here. More Little League over here. It's a hit. Oh, nice play at second. Got him. Excellent. All right. Um, we're about wrapping this up, guys. You guys might even see a sunset with me tonight. 
Um, so more ball fields out. Most of these ball fields in front of me are more kind of beer league um, ball fields. So you'll see a lot of softball players out in this area. To my right is the Xeriscape. Uh, I've never been through it, but Xeriscape is basically a... Um, you guys digging my music, by the way? My 80s? No, 90s. Sorry, this is my 90s music I played tonight. Um, so anyway, this is a um, water conservation area. So you have all, about 7,000 different species of plants, a couple hundred species of just um, living organisms, whatever, whatever that is. Um, and then they store water. There's about 5.5 million gallons of underwater um, storage here but anyway this is this is what they call a water conservation area so you can come out here and just kind of walk through this whole area it's, i guess it's kind of cool if that's what you're into to our right are dog parks so over here to the left you have the softball fields to the right are the dog parks and we'll actually circle around so you can see this first dog park right here where you see nobody you can see way off in the distance there's a bunch of people this first one we see nobody they closed this down in about 2006 so i used to play softball on this field right here and I would basically just go Babe Ruth style. So I'd point out to the left field fence and everybody, like all the people and the dogs in this dog park would just scatter because they knew I was about to hit one in there. And so finally in 2006, they shut this dog park down because they didn't want me hitting any more balls in there. <laughs> right. I don't know why that dog park shut down actually. There's, there's three dog parks here though. And the reason that they have three is for uh, dogs of different sizes. So if you have your little ankle biter running around out here, you don't want them running around with the Dobermans. Um, so that's why they have uh, multiple dog parks here in this area. So you see a little smaller dogs in here. Oh, there's a couple of bigger ones mixed into that group, I guess. It's an honor system. This is a great place to meet people. Again, this is where my dogs grew up. So this is a, um, this is an area, th th these dog parks is where I used to, back when my old bachelor days, when I first moved here, uh, I used to bring my lab, my yellow labs down here when they were pups and they just loved it out here. Cause there were lots of dogs, lots of green grass to run. And it's funny how dogs tend to feed off of other dogs energy when you're out here. Of course, back in the day, again, these are my bachelor days. So don't say anything to my wife, but I guess I'm entitled um great place to meet people right so um you know you see a combination you see tons of dogs lots of people typically it's even more busy than this you see older folks you see younger folks um so again this gives you an idea of just kind of the mix of people and again this is a very dog friendly city so look guys this was um this we, we finished up here we started in 85257 we're finishing up here in 85250 off to my north, if we went up another half mile, three quarters of a mile, we would run into Central Scottsdale, which is McCormick Ranch. Just beyond that is North Central, uh, for several miles up, we would run into North Central, um, which is basically Shea up to the 101 freeway. And then north of the 101 freeway is, is the North Scottsdale area. So uh, Scottsdale Range is 31 miles long from north to south, 11 miles wide at its widest point. Uh, but again, this is as far as I'm going to take you tonight. This is Scottsdale, 85257, 85251, a part of 85250. Hope you guys enjoyed it. If you have any questions, obviously leave them down in the comments below. Questions, comments. Um, and, of course, we'll respond to those as long as you're not trolling us because we don't do trolls. We're going to delete you if you're a troll. But if you have questions, comments, leave them down in the comments below. Otherwise, I'll see you guys on the next video. So there it was, guys, my entire video, uncut, unedited, with the exception of that fake crash Hollywood style. Hope you enjoyed that. Hey, um, now you got it, right? The South Scottsdale, you've seen um, the whole Indian Bend wash path all the way through South Scottsdale. You've seen some of the neighborhoods. Uh, hopefully you've checked out some of my other videos on our Scottsdale playlist, by the way. By the way, my team uh, covers the entire Phoenix Metro. So if you have questions about Scottsdale um, or anywhere in the Phoenix Metro, all you have to do, give us a call, shoot us a text, send us an email. We want to be your key to the greatest state in the country, Arizona. People are flooding here. They're flooding here for a reason. You start to see it today now listen if you haven't already what are you waiting for subscribe to our channel smash the bell guys that way we can notify you every time we create new great videos right here on phoenix homes and hotspots now check out some of my other great videos
right here.